How are you? I'm Dr. Sanjeev Goyal, and today on the Peak Human Podcast, we have Dr. James Kelly. He's a consultant with El Nutra, and El Nutra, El Nutra is known for their Prolon uh, kit, which is a fasting mimicking diet. So today we're going to be learning all about fasting, the science behind it, um, science behind fasting mimicking diets, and uh, I'm sure you're going to really enjoy it. Dr. Kelly is uh, an expert in this field and has a real depth of knowledge here. So um, sit back and enjoy. Hi, James. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward awesome, to, to Thanks the Thanks for having me. This will be good. Awesome. So, uh, you know, we met at, at the conference, I, um, you know, but El Nutra had a, had a great Buddha anti-aging conference. And I know they have a whole uh, amazing product called Prolon. But before we get into the, this whole space, we want to just basically back up a little bit and Talk about fasting in general. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could maybe take us through that. I know you have a you have, do have a slide deck, and if you, if you think this is the right. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of it's talking points, but I'll pull up a visual aid when you need to. But uh, yeah. so, just for by way of background, our company, which is L Nutra, L Dash Nutra, it's a little bit awkward, yeah. but uh, is uh, entirely focused around the research uh, of longevity and health span, how we live the longest, healthiest lives, and. Mm -hmm one of the things that you can look at is where you can intervene. So there are a couple of things that lead to longevity. There are a couple of things that lead to good health. Some of them are non-modifiable. They're things that are, you're just born with or circumstances dictate you can't really change them. Others are what's known as modifiable risk factors. And one of those is diet. So diet plays a big role in how we grow and age. And there's a lot of research around that. But in particular, there's a couple of things that have been identified around the power of fasting. And that's really where our company what he's been focusing recently is the mechanisms that drive your cells to do certain things when you take away nutrition. And if you understand those mechanisms, you can hack them. And that's how we created sort of the fasting mimicking diet is by understanding those pathways. We're going to talk a little bit about that probably as we go along in our conversation. But the mm -hmm. idea of fasting being beneficial is sort of part and partial what we part and parcel to what we do. And to the explanation for why fasting is beneficial is pretty interesting to me. So mm -hmm. there are three key concepts around what we do with this diet called Prolon, which is a five day fasting mimicking diet. One is why is fasting useful Two, why do you need to do several days in a row? And are there different benefits with different lengths of fast? And the answer is yes. And then three, how do you mimic that with food? And if you understand those, you understand Prolon, but just backing up to fasting, which is your original question. The idea that, that most of the research seems to suggest the reason fasting is beneficial is because it's a threat. And like any threat, your body has evolved over time to respond to that threat to maximize your chances of survival. So it's like uh, David Sinclair talks about hormesis or yeah. like this, a good stress, like exercise. Yeah, good stress. Exactly. Yeah. So good stresses have different roles. Some of them trigger like muscle growth if you strain those fibers, things like that. The, the idea that you have this this state that you can go into when you deprive your body of nutrition for long enough, your body feels that stress. And it's actually called a stress resistant state that the cells go into where they stop growing because normally when you're eating, you're flooded with energy and building blocks and the body sends signals that say, we've got the protein, we've got the carbs. So we have the sugar to drive the energy and we have the building blocks and to make the scaffolding. So let's build more, which is great. But when you're done growing up after about age 18, you're just going to grow out. And for every gram of protein, you eat like two thirds of it can be converted to stored energy in bad or not bad, but other forms like fat, cholesterol, things like that. So it's not all muscle that you're growing as you get older. So for after I, about age 18, there's sort of a window where you actually probably want to slow growth a little bit because that's just kind of rapidly aging you. And we'll talk about that too. But, but in terms of why fasting is useful, you run out of building blocks, you run out of energy the cells can't keep spending their time on that, or they're just going to use up resources. It's going to burn through what you got left. So they have to do something different. So when you take away food for long enough for the body to really feel that it's in trouble, it stops sending the growth signals. It says, okay, we don't have any more of that. Now we need to do the best with what we've got. So that triggers that cellular cleanup process called autophagy or autophagy, which is your cell's natural way of eating what's inside of them. Uh, mm -hmm. that's old and they start kind of with old and worn out components like mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cells. As you get older, they age, they feel increased stress throughout life. The more metabolic demand you have on them, the more quickly they wear out. And you inside your cells, you actually use proteins to signal across the cell. They're, they have a little 3d structure to them. And if you're 
dividing too quickly or growing too quickly or too metabolically active, these 3D structures will either get made wrong or break down. And then you just have kind of unfunctioning protein signals inside your cells. And they act like logs or twigs in a, in a swimming pool. You got to wade through them to get to the good stuff. So costs more energy to do that. So your cells as go get older, accumulate this damage, wear and tear, and they don't function as well. But when you put them in a fasting state, it seems to trigger this autophagy state where they clean themselves up, they eat their old and worn out intracellular components, they recycle them, and they function more like their younger cells. So there's this magical thing hidden in every cell in our entire body, and frankly, every cell on earth, since we left the primordial ooze, now we had to survive gaps in resources. So we developed this one pathway that's sort of conserved from very, very small organisms all the way up till humans that does a very similar thing that triggers this cleanup and makes the cells function sort of more optimally. That's sort what of- is the uh, AMPK pathway? What's, what's the AMPK, M2, there's a lot of different things that play a role in that pathway, but yeah, AMPK seems to be widely conserved from nematodes and yeast cells up to humans. Um, there's the mTOR plays a role and they all have some version of that. In humans and mammals, IGF-1 seems to be the main one, which is insulin-like growth factor one. And it's mm -hmm. part of the AMPK pathway. They all interact. There's a dozen things in there. The ones we really focus on, IGF-1 being the main one, it's primarily dependent on proteins. And we'll talk about that because that plays into how we mimic fasting. But mm -hmm. IGF-1, mTOR, and PKA are really what we look at. PKA is protein kinase A that responds to carbs primarily. So if you mm -hmm. eat carbs, you trigger protein kinase A. If you eat amino acids, you trigger mTOR and IGF-1. And mm -hmm. IGF-1 appears to be kind of the master driver. So that's the one we really focus on. So mm -hmm. And growth hormone, I guess, stimulates IGF-1. Is that correct? Yeah, and it's. I think, I didn't apologize. I, I one point I was a biochem major, but I, I yes, forget. I saw that. It's been a couple <laughs> decades. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, the way I think the system works, IGF-1 actually turns into growth hormone or signals growth hormone. So it really is the trigger. Cause if you, there's, I'll just skip to one of the pearls that we talk about usually a little bit later. And that is the Loran people in Ecuador. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They're one of the blue zones. So for those of us listening, I'm sure you guys have heard of the blue zones. If you haven't, the blue zones are the longest living, the highest concentrations of people living over a hundred years on earth. Right. So there's a couple areas, Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Nicoya, Costa Rica, Loma Linda, California. And they all do this. There's like nine pillars or 11 pillars. They keep adding pillars of, of the blue zones, but things like low stress job that you have later in life. So you have purpose. Um, and you do a lot of walking, spend a lot of time with family, drink red wine after 5 PM, uh, eat locally grown foods, primarily plant-based, all that stuff. But there's one group in Ecuador that doesn't do any of that. They just live a very Western lifestyle, but they are immune to cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. They just don't get them. But they're also about three feet tall. So in their DNA, they have a mutation in their IGF-1 pathway, which is that growth pathway. And you can give them growth hormone and they'll grow, but you can give them all the protein you want and they won't grow. So they don't respond to protein. They stay small. The only way to do that is to skip over the IGF-1 and give them the growth hormone that the IGF-1 would have triggered. Mm -hmm. But if you keep them, but we know there are other problems they get that are associated with not having IGF-1, but we know that not having IGF-1 leads to not getting diabetes, cancer, or heart disease. So right. now what we previously thought of as age-related diseases, because these are way more common after age 55, they're not actually age-related, they're growth-related because mm -hmm. we block the growth, you don't get them. We also know that this responds to protein. IGF-1 is a protein pathway. So now we know what types of foods to look at and what research we can then do to focus on how diet impacts how we grow and age. Because mm -hmm. now we've identified that this is a modifiable risk factor. So at the very beginning, when I was talking about modifiable risk factors, diet, I'm not just saying eat healthy. We know specifically what drives what problems. So that's where a lot of the research is headed now. That's where we spend tens of millions of dollars and several decades doing the research around a box of food that can trigger many of the same benefits of fasting. 